Okay, so we are starting on part two now. This is our shikoro. So the shikoro is going to hang to here off the side. It gives kind of that very iconic samurai look with the wide angle uh, and all the plates threaded together. These are our patterns. We have a few, but this is the one that's going to work best for our helmet. We've already got it sized up. And so these pieces actually are cut off from one another so that they nest perfectly together. And then this piece is our piece that will actually mount to the helm. From there, we'll be able to, one, make the Shikoro removable if, you, if there's ever any repairs or modifications to the helmet. And two, uh, we can mount it to the helm and then each of these hang off of it. So we're going to go ahead and get these all traced out. As you can see, there are a lot of holes that we're going to be punching. And from there, we'll get into it. So we're all ready to cut these guys out now. We're going to head over to our other Beverly, get these guys all cut out, and then we'll be able to get we'll be able to start punching them. Thankfully, you'll get to see that on uh, <laughs> you'll be able to see all of our punching on the time lapse, and as opposed to having to sit here through it with me. And then we'll be able to get everything formed, get it in the kiln, get it nice and hot, and and harden it up. Those are our next few steps. So now we're ready to cut out the shikoro. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a feat. So they're really long and it takes a bit of finagling. So I'm going to go a little slow. We're going to go ahead and trace out the first line and cut out this chunk. And then we'll work on each of the pieces individually afterwards. All cut out. They look pretty decent to me. We're gonna go ahead and give them a quick clean on the sander, and then we'll start punching holes for days and days and days and days. Shikoro pieces here. So we have the topmost piece that we put a light flare on so that it fits up against the side of the helmet. We are going to kind of pinch it in the middle section here and so that it wraps around kind of this point created by the crest here. And it's going to come in right where the crest starts to taper in to the actual helmet itself. And that's going to be pretty much a straight line over to the front of the helmet here. So we're going to give it a little pinch and then we're going to get it adjusted so it fits real nice. And then we'll make sure that each piece as we go slots right into this one and one above it. 
So part of the trick is that we have to make sure this guy is almost a perfect fit. Now we've got it to where it's like really, really close. So this side's good. Maybe a little bit on this side. I'm just trying to get nice and even because we're going to be using this as a basis for our other pieces. Just need to adjust exactly where our bend point is so that it fits right up. There we go. Now we are, we're good. We are within acceptable tolerance. And we will mark the center hole and then we will do each hole individually as we move out to make sure it's nice and level. Not doing any of this thing, this thing, this thing. And that'll keep it, make sure it's nice and even as we go around. And it look, should look right. So it's important to remember that you want to take things out evenly in order to keep the tension off the Clicos as much as possible so they don't pop out at you, give you, you know, chest wounds. They're not too bad, but you definitely feel it sometimes when they spring at you. guy all on with the Clicos. I'll put my glasses back on. So Clicos are pretty good. We don't have too much tension. Like we'll be able to adjust a little bit as we rivet it in. And from there, we're going to take each of these pieces in smallest to largest. We're going to fit them up to this guy and then to one another. So we're gonna give each of them a little bend at the back, make this nice bend. It will become a little bit easier. It'll easel out a bit as we come through. And then we will get these layered one on top of another. And once we have that, we're, we'll do the last little bit of shaping and we'll throw it in the kiln to get them heat treated. got those guys all sized up. I'm gonna fire up the kiln and get it preheated and then we're gonna put these guys in our little jig here. This is gonna hold them all in the same angle as we uh, take them out of the kiln as we harden them so they're not gonna warp because these guys are really long. So this is pretty much like having uh, a medium-sized sword length but at 20 gauge thickness. So these guys, without a jig like this, will warp like crazy. They'll go like, you know, octopus dance. But with the jig, it's gonna keep them all nice and structured. They'll be in line, and we're gonna keep this nice look that, we, that we've been working so hard to achieve. So I'm gonna get that kiln fired up, get these guys sized up, and we're ready to roll. <laughs> 